about this Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus and Samsung Galaxy S8 review. To bring our readers and viewers the most comprehensive review experience possible, the Galaxy S8 and Galaxy S8 Plus were reviewed by two different members of Android Authority. While Joshua Vergara put together the video linked above, I, Nairav Gandhia, put together the in-depth written Samsung Galaxy S8 review encompassing both of our opinions to provide a definitive Android Authority view on Samsung's latest flagship. We have both been testing international versions of the Galaxy S8 with model number G950F on build number ending 1AQC9 running Android 7.0.1, with the March 2017 security updates. Our usage with the Galaxy S8 Plus, model number G955U on build number ending 1AQD9, was limited to only a few days and will be following up this review with additional testing around the battery, display, and performance in the coming days. Design Over the past few years, Samsung has transitioned away from its plastic pass to a refinement of its glass and metal build, and the Galaxy S8 presents the future of this design language. There's two sizes to the Galaxy S8 but neither comes with an edge moniker, with Samsung calling its taller curved screens the Infinity Display. The focus with this year's phones isn't the curved display however, but more so how Samsung has managed to squeeze so much screen real estate into the Galaxy S8 and Galaxy S8 Plus. Thanks to the switch to a 18.529 format and the removal of the home button and Samsung branding on the front, we have phones that feel a lot smaller than they should. Think back to previous phones with displays of 5.5 inches or larger and they felt great at the time, but even the Galaxy Note 7 feels positively large compared to Samsung's latest flagships. The 5.8 inch display inside the Galaxy S8 comes inside a body that's slightly taller but narrower than the Galaxy S7, 148.9 by 68.1 mm versus 142.4 by 69.6 mm. Similarly, the Galaxy S8 Plus is a little taller and wider than the Galaxy S7 Edge, 159.5 by 73.4 mm versus 150.9 by 72.6 mm, despite a screen that's 0.7 inches smaller. Both phones are a little thicker at 8 mm and 8.1 mm respectively, but the difference is negligible compared to the much better in hand experience. The added screen real estate sees a bump in the weight as well, at 155 grams and 173 grams respectively, but this helps the Galaxy S8 feel more premium in the hand. Moving around the phone, the volume keys are on the left and the power button on the right, as with previous Samsung phones. The left sees the addition of a dedicated shortcut for Bixby and Bixby Home, Samsung's new AI assistant, which we'll touch on later. Up top is the SIM card tray while on the bottom, you've got the headphone jack, USB Type-C port, and single bottom firing speaker. The back is where Samsung has made arguably the worst design decision on the Galaxy S8. Removing the home button means Samsung had to find a place for the fingerprint sensor and they chose to combine it with the heart rate monitor next to the rear camera. While other OEMs have chosen to put fingerprint sensors in the center of the device, Samsung's decision means it can have its logo right underneath the camera, but as a result, the fingerprint sensor is cumbersome to use. The position doesn't feel natural and on the regular Galaxy S8, it's a stretch with large hands, while on the Galaxy S8 Plus, it's awkward unless you have very large hands. As you'll often be fumbling blindly to find the fingerprint sensor, you may end up with fingerprints on the camera lens itself, so Samsung has included a reminder when you launch the camera to wipe it down. Being forward-thinking and attempting to redefine the meaning of a big phone isn't without its challenges, and while Samsung has made an excellent attempt, the location of the fingerprint sensor does render a very good sensor near useless. However, thanks to other biometric options, it's a small compromise for what is one of the best-designed smartphones ever made. Thanks to a taller screen, the removal of the home button, and bezels that are slimmer than ever, Samsung has managed to put a bigger screen in a footprint that's barely bigger than last year. Samsung is known for making stunning smartphones and the Galaxy S8 is its best yet, ushering in a new era of smartphone design and laying down a marker for Samsung's rivals. Display All of this leads to what we've come to expect from Samsung displays, an extremely vivid Super AMOLED display that punches colors harder than before and is a joy to use. Rated as one of the first HDR-capable smartphones, the Galaxy S8 screen ups the brightness and color saturation of the screen when viewing content like YouTube and apps that support HDR, such as Netflix. It's a noticeable improvement when switching in and out of the app, but it means that the Galaxy S8 offers the best mobile entertainment experience on a smartphone to date. The 18.5 to 9 aspect ratio means Samsung has managed to pack more pixels into its display, with the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus both offering displays at 2960 by 1440 pixels. 
on the Galaxy S8. This translates to a pixel density of 570 pixels per inch, while on the Galaxy S8 Plus this is a little lower at 529 pixels per inch. The additional pixels mean a taller display overall, but there is some pillar boxing when watching widescreen content so you'll have black bars on the sides. You might find the bars distracting for most media content, but you can force apps to full screen mode either through the display settings menu or by tapping the icon in the recent apps menu. Out of the box, both phones come with a display scale down to full HD+, but you can tweak this in things like color saturation in the display settings. The removal of the home button means a switch to soft keys, but Samsung has included a pressure sensitive area near the bottom of the display which vibrates when pressed hard enough and can be used for unlocking the phone when it's asleep. Samsung has found a way to preserve the original unlocking experience of previous Galaxy devices, but the soft keys work well enough that you may almost forget the pressure sensitive button exists. On screen keys allow you to swap the position of the recent taps and back keys, but unlike with other manufacturers, there's no option to add an additional key for the notification menu. Running the Galaxy S8 display through our testing, we found the screen has a max brightness of 373 nits with auto brightness turned off and 515 nits with it turned on. During sunlight we found a visible punch in the brightness and although the display isn't technically the brightest, it is definitely pleasing to the eye. With a color accuracy of 7180 Kelvin, the Galaxy S8 doesn't have the most accurate display in its default out-of-the-box state, and has a warm tone, but with all of these effects turned off, the display is the closest we've come to the ideal temperature of 6500K with a temperature of 6440K. Overall, the addition of so much real estate is a more than welcome trade-off to Samsung removing the home button and much of the experience remains the same otherwise, including the edge ups and always on display, which have a couple of actionable additions. Past Samsung devices have always sported great looking displays, but the Galaxy S8 is in a class of its own and offers one of the most immersive experiences on a smartphone to date.